Now let's talk about the enemy character and the powers that he uses to trap the main character in glass. If I go inside my enemy blueprint, you can see I just simply have some animation set up in here. The appear effect, which is the same as the golden hero's like flash effect where he pops into place and pops out of place. So the next thing is the this torch blueprint. And this torch blueprint is simply a Niagara system and a light that I have set up. So first let's start with the Niagara system because that's where pretty much in this one, I simply have um, uh, a texture with a scale color, uh, initialized particles, and a scale sprite size, and it goes from one to zero. So it's simply this, and this is kind of like the activation of their powers where their hands light up and are fiery. So for this texture, it's super simple again. It's just this texture from a texture pack, and I'm adding a little bit of contrast and particle color so we can control the color inside the Niagara emitter. From uh, one to zero here, and it's 0.3 seconds long. And again, there's my texture. Very, very simple. Just getting, starting out big and then going down to zero before activating the fire. It's spawning these texture sprite sheets that I made in Houdini for the fire. They're very, very simple. And I will show you how I created them in Houdini. So first all I did is put down a sphere as a polygon. I added a mountain to give it some variation. And then show you my settings. Anything will really work here. And then I added a pyro source to add my density, temperature, and burn. And then I made an attribute noise for each of them. So I have this one for the density, this for the temperature, and this one for the burn. Next, I did a volume rasterize attributes. You've seen me do before for the explosions. And then I have a switch here actually to turn off after 40 seconds. And the switch, it's actually just this transform is going from zero to one. So it's getting smaller and smaller, basically just extinguishing this fire. And then I put down a pyro solver and I did use the bonfire template, so that's why it's called this, but the settings are a bit different. So this is my voxel size and my time. I want it to be a bit faster, so it's uh, time scale is 1.25. My sourcing, my density is at 0.3. My temperature source scale is at two. Burn flame, 0.5 vector, my velocity. go through some, some of these settings. I have dissipation at one because I don't want any smoke on this. I'm going to have my smoke set up separately. So for this, I just want to have fire and that's it. Again, I put high disturbance at 10, not near as high as the explosions. Okay, now for my file cache this, I'll show you what this looks like. That's it. Very, very simple. Just a bit of fire, and then I'm going to be spawning these a whole bunch of times on top of each other inside of Unreal, but this is how I have it set up. And then in my Pyro Big Volume, you probably guessed what I did here, but under fire, I just set this to purple. These are my values. And I have a little purple fire that dissipates away. So. Once you're done with that, as we've done before, very similar to the explosion, I just have, this is called camera eight. I have flipbook textures, purple fire, camera eight, 64 frames. And I put down this pyro bake volume into here, all default settings. And then in my composite export, we're exporting it to wherever you're gonna, or you could just uh, export it directly into your Unreal folder. I'm not using motion vectors as usual. And that's it for the fire. Now for the smoke, the smoke, I'm just gonna show you how I set this up since we're already in Houdini. It's a little bit different. But for this one, I actually did it from the top. So I just did a pyro burst source. I wanted a little explosion, like a poof of smoke. I'm just gonna go through my settings. Frame duration six, hour expansion of two. And again, as always, created my density, temperature burn. I don't actually need that, it's doing nothing. Okay, that's it. And then I added a point velocity, 
just the curl noise. Yep. And then I did the volume rasterize attributes, as I've done many, many times. After that, it's ready to be simulated. I did this one in AdoptNet. And box size 0 0.08, uh, sourcing in the fuel, density, velocity 2, multiplied it. And then this is my shape, dissipation 0.1, disturbance 0.1, shredding 0.5, and turbulence 1.3. And that's it. Pretty simple. And then I did a top import fields so I could bring in my density and my velocity. Those are the two that we need. And then I brought those in, file cached them, converted them, put them right here. And then if I go through, you can see that's only because they're uh, this right now. But then I time scaled it because I didn't want some of the first six frames because it wasn't very interesting. I just want this, higher big volume. You see, I have a little poof of smoke, and I'm just going to spawn these randomly uh, from in my Unreal project. So in my Unreal project, you can see if you look at my smoke, it's just like little poofs of smoke that are going up. It's very, very subtle. It's very, very easy. And these can spawn uh, with random rotation because this is a ball shape of smoke, which is the advantage of doing it like this, is that you don't always have to have it going up. You get more variation this way from just one uh, sprite sheet. So yeah, this is just a little ball of smoke. And then inside this flipbook textures, again, I use the top cam, make sure that it is uniform in its view. Always remember to do that so you don't get stretched. Check the resolution, make sure it's the same. Mine set to orthographic. Then I do the pyro bake volume and just export it. And I'm not using my motion vectors. And that's it. So I exported those two out and then I brought them into Unreal and I'll show you how I have those set up. Now that you've exported the textures and brought them into your Unreal package, what you need to do is go to, again, the M template Pyro Advanced that comes with the SideFX Labs plugin tool. And from there, we need to make a few changes and it's gonna be a bit different than our explosion that we made earlier. The one difference is we're not going to, we want, we want to control these based on the particle life. So plug in particle relative time into the clamp here like this. And then the other thing you want to do is we want to have a little bit more control over the color. This isn't maybe necessary, but just to have a little bit more control, plug particle color into a multiply and plug that into emissive color. And once you've done that, make an instance of this and your instance will be, uh, it will be like this. And you want to set it up how I have it here. So you want to make sure your motion vectors are turned off if you're not using them, set the correct columns and rows and I set mine to have a very high intensity and scatter, like how much emission is going on here. Same with here too. So I have a really emissive start and then uh, not very emissive and zero for the emission end. And yeah, make sure to plug in your emissive color and your final texture color. Since there's no smoke, the MDC1 and MDC2, I didn't end up using them actually. And then once you have that set up inside the Niagara system, you can see how I have this set up where it's just we have a spawn rate about 30 of these. So we're spawning these fire sprite sheets that we've made and their lifetime and like from beginning to end is being controlled by the initialized particles. So they will have a lifetime between one to 1 1.5. So if I set this for longer, it's gonna drag out this animation. So if it's too long, it'll go kind of like frame by frame, which isn't what we want. So we're gonna keep this pretty short between one and 1.5, just to have some variation. Then I have some velocity sending these particles that are instance into sprite sheets up between 30 and 80 in a cone. And then I have some drag and I'm scaling the sprite size from one to zero so that as these go up, they're getting smaller. And this is meant to just kind of reflect kind of just like a candle-esque look uh, with just these sprite sheets spawning up. And then for color, I've changed a little bit. I've added a little bit more to the blue. Originally when I had this set up, it looks kind of like pink. Uh, which is not what I want. I want this to be more purple to match the overall theme. So I set this to four and that's it. You have your, as soon as, as soon as you have this in here, it's all set to go. You don't need to do anything else with that, but have the spawn rate correct, the initialized particles, your velocity, and it's all set up for the fire. Now let's talk about the smoke. Smoke is pretty much the exact same thing. If we come here, this actually has the exact same master material as the fire. So you don't need to make any changes to that. We're just going to look at the material instance because it's just another material instance of that master material we just messed with. 
for this one, I set the opacity to 0.3. I want the opacity to be pretty light. I don't want this smoke to be super visible. I just want it for just a little bit of detail. So I set the opacity to 0.3, turn off motion vectors. Same for pretty much everything else. I don't need any emissive scatter at the end or the beginning because this is smoke and I don't need any emission. So then when you have that, I'm just gonna solo this. This is set up pretty much the same way as uh, everything else. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong one. This guy, fast smoke. But you can see it's super, super transparent. You can barely see it. Uh, just to turn it up, I'm gonna show you what it looks like at one. So now you can see it's these little smoke poof balls basically coming out of this center. And a uh, trick with this is the reason that we uh, made kind of a circle of smoke is that we can rotate it randomly. So I have a non-uniform at 150, 150, but then the sprite rotation is random. So it'll spawn in different ways and different rotations. So it gives some variation to the mix. Uh, I have some gravity just going up and going in the opposite direction. So gravity is going just up. I have some drag. I have a little bit of wind force at 200. And yeah, I just have this here. And again, the initialized particles between one and three is determining how long these sprite sheets are lasting in their lifetime. So in conclusion of this, we have our uh, sprite burst. That is just this texture spawning with some glow to activate our effect. Then we have the fire spawning with a spawn rate of 30 and a lifetime between one to 1.5. And we've changed the color values a little bit to just give it a more purple tone. And then we have our smoke, which is between a lifetime of one and three at a spawn rate of three at a time with a uh, sprite scale size of just going up to one, starting at 0.2. And then we have gravity just going in the opposite direction just to set it going upwards, some drag, some wind force uh, with going into the Z200. And that's it. And also this smoke's opacity is at 0.3 in that material instance. So now let's take a look at the blueprint where I have these set up a bit more. So the blueprint is really simple. It's just this exact Niagara system that we just made. And on top of that, we have a point light. And this point light is having its uh, value changed by this timeline. And you can see this timeline is just very randomized. It's just random points. You just wanna make something that is, uh, is not gonna be super uniform or super predictable. So when this light is getting dimmer or brighter, you want it to be kind of randomized so it's not obvious what's going on. So I just have this, and then it's being multiplied by a thousand times a random float and that is setting the intensity of these lights. And so these two together are what are being spawned in the hand of our enemy character. Back in our enemy character, we have those purple torches being spawned onto the sockets on the hands. And because we are going with a continuously emitting fire, this fire will look like it's reacting a bit to the movement of the hands, where if this was one simple sprite sheet, that's like looping, we wouldn't get this type of movement where it looks like the hands are actually having, the hands movement is having some effect over the fire. So inside the enemy, after all this is done, after eight seconds, we're just destroying the actor and everything included. That's all these blue lines that are going through. It's just saying, hey, once you spawn these torches, the return value is just going into the destroy actor. So let's take a look at it. Our characters are spawning in just fine. They have the light up effect on the hands and the fire is spawning out of here. And if you look closely on the ground, there's a little bit of purple that's flashing here. And this just adds to the overall effect. These little details can really go a long way in improving your VFX.